Knock, knock. Who's there? Physically aware network on chip IP. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 533 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Are we talking about network on chips this week? Why, yes, we are. My guest is Andy Nightingale from Arteris, and we're investigating the role that network on chips have played in the development of SOC designs. We also discuss how a physically aware knock can not only help you address your PPA goals, but also get you to physical convergence faster. So, without further ado, please welcome Andy to Fish Fry. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? Fantastic. Yeah, as we were saying, Amelia, before we started, apart from the weather. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) Me too. Okay, so first off, Andy, for my audience who may not know, what is our terrace all about? Yeah, sure. So our terrace is a a long established commercial IP company that is all about helping our customers reduce cost and risk. This is especially true when it comes to complex system on chip designs or smaller designs that have complex power management requirements. So we operate across multiple key verticals in our industry, including automotive and industrial communications, consumer electronics, and enterprise compute. And we're actually found in either seven or eight of the top 10 semiconductor company designs. So inside these verticals, our horizontal focus is on supporting AI, machine learning, uh, functional safety, and reliability, and the hardware software interface. So starting uh, initially as the, the network on chip interconnect pioneer, We now have over 3 billion ISEs shipping in the world today with our IP inside, of Arteris IP inside. And as well as NOC technology, we also have other product offerings such as cash coherent interconnect, last level and dedicated cash IPs, IP deployment tools, and our Magellan IP deployment tools help connect functional IP blocks in SOX and create and manage the hardware and software interface at a higher level. Now, you guys just released a new generation of your FlexNOC IP. So before we dig into the details, can you explain to my audience a bit about the role that network on chips have played in the development of SOC designs? Sure. Yeah, a network on chip or NOC interconnect plays a crucial role in system on chip designs. Think of it, if you will, like a a silicon road network that controls uh, data traffic flow and touches almost every functional block in the design and connects them all together. A knock enables efficient and scalable communication between various functional blocks, such as CPUs, GPUs, memories, peripheral devices, by providing a high bandwidth and low latency communication infrastructure. And network on chips today are ubiquitous and vital in today's designs and have a number of advantages over traditional uh, crossbar interconnects. So firstly, a NOC provides a scalable and a hierarchical communication infrastructure that can handle an increasing number of functional blocks in the design, whilst at the same time, minimizing the number of wires needed to connect all these together. With a crossbar interconnect, the sheer number of parallel wires needed quickly becomes impractical as the number of blocks exceeds some arbitrary limit. And secondly, uh, the NOC is able to maintain a quality of service and, and guarantees that. Uh, and these are essential for multimedia applications. So despite the rising complexity of the design, the NOC is able to guarantee, like I say, the quality of service as the design scales. Thirdly, NOC interconnects can provide energy efficient communication by dynamically adapting the communications paths and utilizing idle resources, which is also an important factor in building fault tolerance and resilience uh, into the interconnect network. And then finally, providing a commercially available, mature and proven Arteris NOC solution frees customers up from having to build and maintain their own in-house knock. 
And this enables them to focus their time on innovation and differentiation that set their sock design apart from their competition. All right. So you guys just released the FlexNOC 5 Physically Aware Network on Chip IP. Now, this new solution will help my audience with their PPA goals, right? Can you tell me about that in particular and how the physical awareness of the FlexNOC 5 plays into that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Physical awareness has now become all but essential for sub-16 nanometer designs. This is because designing the knock at architecture and RTL level without taking physical layout constraints into consideration can lead to significant schedule unpredictability and project risk as the layout team have to converge on timing for each of these iterations. So at 16 nanometers or below, knock architectures can easily be created at the high level, especially if you want to uh, do something like look at a vector of performance. So to maximize performance, easily designed. But it can actually be really difficult or very impractical to lay out and close timing on this design without taking this physical awareness into account. So this problem scenario is well known in the SOC design space. And SOC designers already employ some strategies to try and minimize the risks here. In order to reduce the risk to schedule unpredictability at the back end layout phase, it's common for customers to involve their system architects and designers to provide some manual guidance at the knock architecture phase, higher up in the flow. An early floor plan might be used as a reference point and the knock topology created with this in mind uh, for the major IP blocks in the design. Pipeline stages will be manually added into the design to break along timing paths. And this does actually involve some level of estimation and guesswork, uh, even from the experts. As the layout turnaround cost is so prohibitive though, this manual pipelining also tends to be over-provisioned in most cases. And this erring on the safe side from the designer also costs additional silicon area and power as a result. So FlexNOC 5's automatic pipeline insertion can reduce the knock area by up to 15% or more. And there's also a corresponding power saving too, due to less logic uh, being needed by this automated process uh, in FlexNOC 5. So Andy, aside from improving PPA, Tell my audience about how a physically aware knock gets you to physical convergence faster. Does this new IP from a terrace change the design and development process in order to take time out of the process? So even with this manual expert estimation using floor plans early in the design flow, it is common in today's complex designs for a timing closure issue to cause the team to revert back to the architecture in order to break up the connections and or insert more pipeline stages. The constraints for place and route are accordingly updated and another round of synthesis and place and route is then started. Uh, in one case study we looked at, the knock architecture took approximately three weeks uh, to specify and design before RTL could be generated. But it took over two months uh, for the layout and timing closure to complete after that. So this is where our terrace comes in. Our Flex Knock 5 Knock IP with its built-in physical awareness gives the layout team a much better starting point through implementing the automation that we've just discussed and effectively enabling co-optimization between the digital implementation flows, between the physical tools and between this high level architecture. So in case studies on customer designs, we've seen that we can enable up to a five times faster convergence on this physical time enclosure step. And that's something that we're really excited about sharing. So this clearly is a big saving for the team as a whole. And the development process can then benefit from focus in other areas such as PPA optimization, or uh, more verification cycles, or just getting that product to market faster. FlexNOC 5 is the latest version of our Terrace NOC IP. It directly addresses the challenge of converging on time enclosure. And then going back to, to what we're all about for a second, for our Terrace, it's helping our customers to minimize NRE costs and schedule risk by being the glue that allows all SOC functional blocks to communicate as, as efficiently as possible.
Fantastic. All right, Andy, are you ready for your off the cuff question? <laughs> now we can go off the cuff. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> All right. So, Andy, a lot of us can't have our favorite foods these days for one reason or another. So, Andy, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there or the restaurant is closed. What would you have? Well, I think I'm actually very lucky because I live very close to a wonderful fish and chip shop uh, where I'm here in the UK, uh, in Cambridge. It's not quite by the seaside, which would have been better, uh, but I would go definitely for my cod and chips, uh, my deep fried fries and my battered cod. I mean, that that's just uh, ideal for a cold, wet day like today. It sure is. That sounds delicious. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Andy, it is a pleasure having you on my show. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, Amelia, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Really appreciate it. Have you heard about LP79118D? Sounds like a random component part number, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's actually an Earth-sized exoplanet that is only about 90 light years away from Earth and may be capable of supporting life. So, what do we know about this new exoplanet? Well, it was discovered with the help from ground and space-based observations by the now-retired Spitzer Space Telescope and NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS. And it's located in a constellation called Crater in the Southern Celestial Hemisphere. And it orbits a small red dwarf star that is about 86 light years away. So in space terms, it's practically in our backyard. Astronomers have concluded that LP79118D is only slightly larger and more massive than Earth. But it is tidally locked, which means that the same side of the planet always faces that red dwarf star. So that star-facing side would most likely be too hot for surface water. But this team of astronomers thinks that the volcanic activity on the planet could sustain an atmosphere, and even further, it may also allow for water to condense on the non-star-facing dark side of the planet. So this newly discovered exoplanet is on the inner edge of what is referred to as the Goldilocks zone. That means it's not too hot and not too cold for the existence of surface water. And this isn't the only exoplanet in that zone. Before this team discovered LP79118D, astronomers were already aware of another planet in the system, LP79118C, an outer planet that is much larger and more massive than planet D. But the interaction between planet C and planet D is really interesting. It's actually similar to Jupiter's moon Io and could explain the planet's volcanic activity because of its elliptical orbit. You see, when the larger planet C passes close to planet D, it produces a gravitational tug, which causes an elliptical orbit. That orbit actually deforms planet D just a little bit and subsequently creates an internal friction that substantially heats the planet's interior and, you guessed it, produces volcanic activity on its surface. Karen Collins, co-author of the study, explains this about the discovery of LP79118D. Only a small proportion of the exoplanets discovered so far are thought to be able to support life. Our discovery of LP79118D gives us more hope that we might one day find signs of life on another planet. She goes on to say that this discovery is just the first step. 
with the potential to continue studying this planet with the James Webb Space Telescope, we will be able to fine-tune our observations and learn more about the planet's likely volcanically-fueled atmosphere. Future discoveries will help us understand how the ingredients of life might have come to be on worlds other than our own. Wow. So if you want even more information about this super cool new discovery, I've included a link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's episode on YouTube as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. <laughs> and you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of May 26th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>